You watch in the news on Gakshi television, it's now time to track stories that made headlines last week. Welcome to Track in the Week. On Monday, the federal government provided a sum of 102.5 billion naira in resources to be available for direct interventions in the healthcare sector. This came as part of the 500 billion naira COVID-19 crisis intervention fund approved by President Muhammad Buhari to cushion the effects of the coronavirus pandemic on the economy. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, who made a disclosure at the World Press Conference in Abuja, said the 500 billion naira COVID-19 intervention fund would also focus on the agricultural sector to mitigate food crisis, which would in turn create employment opportunities for about 774,000 Nigerians. The minister also disclosed that the government has applied for fund from the World Bank and International Monetary Fund's COVID-19 Rapid Credit Facility to withdraw up to $3.4 billion from the country's existing contributions, which she noted is not tied to any conditionality. On Tuesday, the Boko Haram terrorist group attacked Kachinga, the hometown of the Damawa state governor in Madagali local government area of Adamawa state, and burned houses worth millions of naira. Confirming the attack, commander of the troops in Madagali, Colonel Abdus Salam, said there was an attack, but soldiers were able to repel the attack. A correspondent reported that Madagali, the hometown of the Damawa state governor, has been in the forefront of several attacks by the Boko Haram terrorist group, killing thousands and rendering many homeless. The report also showed that the Chadian troops had killed over 100 fighters of the sect and they continued to clear them from the Lake Chad basin. But Nigerian communities still remain vulnerable and easy targets for the terrorist group. On Wednesday, the federal government launched investigation into the fire incident that occurred at the Treasury House, Abuja. The Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, who made the disclosure while inspecting the building, said the investigation is to ascertain the level of damage caused and gave insight into possible causes of the inferno, as well as how to avoid a recurrence. Casual workers in the complex said the fire started at about 10.25 a.m. and destroyed the office of the assistant director, Capital, located on the fourth floor of the five-story building. And on Thursday, the federal government granted amnesty to no fewer than 2,600 inmates as part of measures to decongest prison facilities in the country amid the coronavirus pandemic. The Minister of Interior, Rauf Arabashala, disclosed this at a conference at the headquarters of the Nigerian Correctional Service in Abuja, where at least 70 inmates who were serving various terms for crimes against the society were released. Arabashala noted that the inmates released included those 60 years and above, those suffering from terminal illness, convicts serving three years and above, and have less than six months to serve, inmates with mental issues, and inmates with an option of fine not exceeding 50,000 naira. On Friday, the Consul General of Nigeria in Guangzhou, China, Anazir Madrabuchi Cyril, confronted some Chinese officials days after a video of Nigerians being sent out of their apartments in the Asian country went viral on social media. Cyril accused the Chinese officials of targeting Nigerians in the wake of coronavirus, which began in China. The ambassador said no Chinese citizen has been served same treatment in Nigeria, noting that such act was not meted out to foreign nationals in other countries battling coronavirus. He disclosed that most Nigerians who are victims of the Chinese government's maltreatment live in China and have not been out of the country. Meanwhile, the chairman and chief executive officer of Nigerians in Diaspora, Abike Dabiri Erewa, had called in Nigerians thrown out of their hotel rooms in Ganzhou, China, to report themselves to the Nigerian consulate in the Asian country for proper documentation and further actions.
Those were the stories that made headline during the week.